All right, we're getting her set up. We got a whole new op here that we're going to be doing. And I'll go ahead and show you the cutter I'm going to use. We're not going to use that one. So, we got this roughing slab mill that Colton Hawk had given me. And we're going to use this on this cut right here. So, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm kind of started getting it set up, and I want to go ahead and show you uh, from this point on. What I'm doing is I'm going to mill an angle on this and I'm just kind of copying the profile of the original part from KT. Let me just grab it real quick so I can show you. Okay, so you see the angle on it? Maybe I should hold it about like that. So you're wider down here and it goes down. What we're going to do, my plate is six inches wide. This is actually wider than six inches, but we're going to do a six and we're going to taper it down to four inches, all right? But I'm not copying it exactly. What I've done is I moved in uh, two inches from the end, and then this is going to be four inches wide down here. So I just scribed a line. This is nothing that's super precision, got to be accurate. So I scribed a line, and I've got a parallel clamped on that line there. I've already got this green clamp kind of pinched down to it. That's the angle plate that I'm using there. You can see how I've got it clamped. And we're going to be putting another green clamp over on this side once I get it level. So, it's getting close. It's getting close. Let me I'll grab this little pocket level right here. I showed this in a video a while back. I wonder if y'all remember where I got this from. We're going to set that up there. see. I'm going to set that up there just like so. Alright, we got this Sterrett Machinist Jack. I'm going to get it out of the box here. Alright, let's see. Let's put it let's put it underneath here. And we'll go ahead and use this to uh, bring it on up. You probably can't see the, the bubble there, so let me get you a better angle here. in each one of the lines there we got quite a bit of resistance on the on the uh, the jack by the way this end is the end we milled and I've got that level they're in line with each other and it pushed them up even since I got the clamps on them there so I like that right there so we're gonna leave the jack just like it is that'll that'll create a stop for the downforce go ahead and get this other clamp on here. I'm going to do some more tightening on that. I don't have to move the camera out of the way. Okay, so I like our level there. We look pretty good. I'm happy with that.
another little space here. No, it's hard to go. It's hard to screw all the way up on there. I need to find another little short space here. I think we're ready to go. Let me get her centered up and we'll start a cut. I'm ready to touch off. I got my mister set up kind of way I want. And I'm not sure what to expect. I've, I've never used a roughing slab mill before. This is the first time. And roughing, roughing end mills work really good. They're very efficient. They're very quiet, smooth cutting cutters. I'm hoping we get good results with this too. So I'm gonna start Hmm, let's see. Let's see about how much we got to come off here. So, uh, two inches basically, because I measured down two inches. I think I'm going to start with a half inch and see how it does, okay? Just going to get it touched off. touching there figuring about um, 50 surface feet per minute that puts me about 78 rpm good guys really good all right stop the feed i'm going to drop it down a few thou we'll wrap it back across let's go ahead and stop everything and look at it that did really good that was a pretty decent cut let's uh let's try that again 
That's pretty pretty efficient cut, I think. I want to adjust to get a little bit more coolant here. Okay, another half inch. Now we're at one inch total. Okay, second cut, here we go. There's a look at the cut. It's, it's doing really good. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I'm happy with the half inch cut, so I'm gonna leave it at that for our next one. Let's see. So yeah, we basically got an inch. It's gonna be just shy of an inch, about maybe about 15, 16 there. about 455 all right that's what we'll dial in
All right, guys, what you think? Did y'all like watching that? I hope you did. I, I actually had a lot of fun with this. That's one of the things that I just like doing out here, you know, is, is watching this kind of stuff. I love watching this mill cut and make, make nice heavy cuts. And it really performed well in this. And that, that cutter did great. It did really good. That was a lot of metal removal right there, but it, it did it fine. So uh, before I take it out, we're going to do one more cut on this. And that is we're going to go ahead and put our, our weld prep back in here where we cut it away. And I'm going to have to change this arbor out. That's an inch and a quarter arbor. The only kind of cutters that I got, uh, the double angle style, 90 degree cutters like this right here, go on a one inch arbor. So this is something that I need to find. I need to find some of these double angle cutters, preferably like 90 degree, um, some bigger ones too, that'll go on an inch and a quarter arbor instead of just these small ones. This is the one that we used right here, and it, it's a little bit wider, so you can put a little wider cut on it, but you know, it's only good for one side there. So we can't use that. So that's our next step, is to uh, swap this out, put our one inch back on there, and we'll just line it up right here, and just go as deep as we can, and we'll go down there and make that little weld bevel. Uh, you can see I got everything swapped out and I'm just getting it centered up now and I'm just giving the old eyeball not running very true none of my one inch arbors I can get to run very true I think they all got a slight bend in them Well, that went that went well as expected. So I think I'm gonna uh, pause here and decide on my next step that I want to take. So what we're gonna do? I've got the the weld bevel machined in the two plates here. I'm gonna I've got the uh, TIG welder set up over here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this side tapped really good with the TIG, and then I'll unclamp it and flip it over and, and clamp it again tight and tack the other side as well. And it should be nice and firm and, and held together. And then, uh, as far as welding goes, you know, I could very well TIG this all the way up, uh, but I think I want to use my stick welder this time. I haven't done that in a while on video, so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make use of, the, of some rods that I got. So let's go ahead and get started on it.
All right, we'll go ahead and unclamp it, flip it over. All right, there's a good shot of the tacks on this side here. All right, so you can see where it did draw a little bit. We'll put our big clamps back on it and it should pull it right on back up tight. There we go. All right, looking good. All righty, we made it over here to the welding table and told you I'm gonna use stick welder to do this. And we're gonna make use of our Lincoln swag that was uh, given to me by Jim over at Do-Right and Lincoln. Got the new jacket on, got the new gloves and a new welding helmet there. And in addition to that, we're making use of the uh, newly acquired fume extractor that I got from Dale Deary. This would be a pretty nice addition right here. So we can pull the sucker down, turn it on, and it'll, it'll suck the fumes up out of there and it'll actually filter it too. Alright, so let's get going. I wanted to mention that this is a electrode holder that I had bought last year sometime, uh, Tweco 300 amp, and I just put it on, so I'll be using this for the first time. I'm going to lay my first beads down with the 187018, and I may go in there with a 532nd rod to uh, fill it all in. Yeah, it's laying in there pretty good.
just a little bit so I'm not running downhill. this next pass I'm going to use my 1 rod again and what I'll do is I'll be I'll go back and forth to each side of the bead and tying in that bevel and I believe after this pass I might be able to go with uh, one of my 532nd rods right here as a cap put a nice heavy cap on top of it we'll see how this one looks after I get it filled in
good there. beads like this when I come back in there to tie that in. What I like to do is I like to strike my arc in front of the puddle there where I stop and then go into it and then come back over where I struck my arc. Alright, so there's our one side that's finished up. I believe that filled in pretty good. So I should be able to dress that down and, and it have a nice flat finish without any little valleys in it, I hope. I might have to spot this in just a little bit more right there. Uh, this end right here, you know, I come in and, and spot it in a couple times with the stick just to uh, fill in that little valley at the very end of it there. It's coming along pretty good. Get it over here like that, get it kind of level, and I'm going to finish out this side. All right, on this last run, I'm going to go ahead and use my 532nd 7018s, and I'm going to try to make I'm going to try to make one pass to fill it in, but I might have to go back again. But these are uh, starting to get pretty old, so I'm just trying to use them up before they all go bad. with the 532nd 7018. Nice and uniform and I'm going from edge to edge. Pause for a moment and come to the other edge of pause. Just keep working it back and forth. Really trying to build it up. She is filled in. I think I accomplished the mission right there. All but just a little bit on this end. I'm going to go in there and touch this up here. And right in there, I probably, um, I might cheat, pull my TIG welder over here and just kind of build up those so that I know they're blended real good. But yeah, that was one pass with the uh, 532 nd here. And just goes to show that even though you might have some rods that's been hanging around for quite a while, doesn't mean that they're bad. Um, you'll know when they're bad if you try to start welding and the flux is just popping off of it as you're welding, then yeah, they're bad. But uh, I've had good luck with a lot of these old rods still working and doing what I need. 
you may not get as a superior weld as you know a fresh set of rods, especially when they're pulled out of an oven, but they still get the job done is what I'm saying. So I'm happy with it right there. I'm going to let this thing cool. And I haven't decided yet at this point if I'm going to dress that with a grinder or if we're going to use the, uh, the milling machine. But I'm kind of leaning towards using the mill and making everything nice and flat. So uh, see you soon.